Oh wow, wow. A two-in-one that can game like a champ. Unbelievable. Woo! Let's go, baby. Tell you out there, champs. Today, we're going to have a look at how the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 9575 games. So if you're new around here, please consider subscribing. Be a champ. I'd really appreciate that. And give me a like if you like the video. And you wouldn't really think two in one's game, but this thing, wow, it games like a champ because it does have Intel's Kaby Lake G, which is Intel's eighth generation quad core CPU with the Radon RX Vega MGL attached to it. And that MGL has four gigabytes of HBM memory. This model here has 16 gigabytes of RAM, has an i7-8705G CPU. This also has a 4K touch display with the pen support there touch sensitivity and all, 16 gigs RAM and one terabyte SSD. Also comes with Windows Home and if you want to upgrade to say Windows 10 Pro, check out the links in the description. I have a discount code where you can get a Windows 10 Pro license for cheap, also office keys, very cheap. So check out the description for those links and the discount code. So this i7-8705G is a really fantastic part. Now the actual CPU side of it is actually a 15 watt quad core CPU, pretty much like the 8th generation U part you find in say the Dell XPS 13 and so on. But what makes this special is when you're not using the graphics, because it does have that Vega graphics attached to it, when you're not using the graphics, it can perform more like a 45 watt 7700 HQ. Amazing. Now when you're using the CPU and the graphics, they will dynamically share the power in between them. The total package TDP is 65 watts and they will share that. But man, this thing can game, seriously can game. Has a great display, so the games look awesome on it, 4K display. If you come from a high refresh monitor, you will notice a little bit of ghosting. But if you've only used 60 Hertz monitors, there's no big real world issues with ghosting, etc. At the end of the day, it's not really a gaming laptop or two in one. Because it uses this Kaby Lake G processor, they're able to get it super thin. Have a look how thin that base is. And the screen is a little bit thicker because it has all that pen technology behind the display but look how razor thin that base is. It's much thinner than the XPS 15, 95, 60 or 70. And because it's so razor thin, you don't get the USB type A ports. You're stuck with USB-C and Thunderbolt and mini SD card. Also the keyboard has less travel. So it's got that Magnilev keyboard, which takes a bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. I don't mind it, but it will seem foreign at first. And the sound's actually really good on this too. So, you know, depending on which orientation you use it in, will depend on what sound experience you get. And also I noticed it has a vent underneath. Now, if you flip this around, in tablet mode and put the keyboard as the base of the laptop, you can have that vent sticking up. Now heating is not really an issue on this, but it's an interesting way to game. Also what I noticed is when I was gaming, the noise isn't that loud and it doesn't get hot. Really it's 60, 70, not very often would it go into the 80s. And because of that, the sound isn't that bad. Obviously you can hear it, it's not silent, but compared to a gaming laptop, like really quiet. Now you all want to know how this performs and I would say it's a medium to high-ish 1080p 60 frames per second performance there. It's actually faster than the 9560 with a GTX 1050 in it. Sometimes it's a bit slower, sometimes it's the same, but generally it's maybe a tad faster and it's not quite as fast as the 9570 which has the GTX 1050 Ti. So amazing gaming performance out of a two-in-one and something so light and thin. It, it really is amazing that it's actually as fast as the 9560. That actually blew me away and it doesn't get super hot considering how thin it is. So we all want to know the benchmarks. Now I had to tweak with the benchmarks because some it would play at 60 frames per second at medium and some it would play at high. So there's a bit of a mixture here. So at medium settings, PUBG, 62.7 frames per second. GTA 5 at high and very high, 73 frames per second. These are all at 1080p. This one was really killer and this really shows the power of Vega or AMD graphics. DSX Mankind Divided at medium settings, 50 frames per second. That is amazing for DSX Mankind Divided and AMD graphics really perform well on this. You know, we'll be looking under 50 frames per second on the 9560 and even the 9570 wouldn't be that much faster if at all faster. Now Fortnite, 140 frames per second at medium. So I bumped it up to high 
and we were getting 91 frames per second on Fortnite 1080p. And to round it off, Battlefield 1 medium settings 1080p 69.1 frames per second. So as you can see, this thing is a gaming beast. It is not a gaming device, but if you want to game on it, you're going to get a great experience. I will show you some live gameplay now. So look on the top left hand corner for the thermals, frames per second and the frequencies of the GPU and CPU. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'll have more reviews on this XPS 15 2-in-1. So make sure you subscribe to see them. Until next time guys. Tally ho. Righto chaps. Now let's see how this Dell XPS 15 2 in 1 9 5 7 5 games. Now it has the Kaby Lake G processor, which is the eighth generation Intel quad core CPU combined with Vega graphics, AMD Vega graphics. Let's see how it games. I've said before, probably, um, that this will game pretty much any game, you know, medium settings, 60 frames per second, 1080p. So that is indeed really powerful for a two in one. In fact, it's nearly as powerful as the last XPS 15, the 9560, with the GTX 1050, the four gigabyte GTX 1050. It's nearly as powerful as that. I wouldn't say it's quite as powerful, but it's pretty close. And considering how thin the base is on this, like I know the screen's a bit thicker because it has all that gadgetry behind the screen that uh, is used for the pen support but um the actual base is really thin it's super thin um it's amazing that you get this power and you know i'm bored of testing nvidia graphics even though nvidia is the best come on we've got to say that but <laughs> um it is great to be testing a a gpu from someone other than nvidia and vega just sounds cool and as you can see we're getting 2.4, 2.5 on the clock, the CPU clock, top left hand telemetry there. We're pulling about 72 degrees on the CPU and around 70 frames per second. And this is at high, very high settings, 1080p. Uh, the GPU's running at about a gigahertz and 65 degrees. And so far, I have not encountered any bad throttling that affects gaming performance you got to remember that the cpu and the gpu in this uh they share power dynamically so you cannot run both of them at full speed at one time they actually share the power dynamically um it does have a 130 watt power supply i believe these are 165 tdp the watts 165 watts so I don't think it really, oh sorry, not 165, 65 watts combined. That's GPU and CPU. So I don't think we really need a 130 watt power supply, but remember they can boost, they can actually use more, like the CPU can actually use more than 45 watts. And the GPU, I'm not actually sure how much that can draw, but it's supposed to be altogether 65 watts which is amazing amount of power you're getting out of a system you know you you can make some really thin systems with this and this is really thin and as you can see it's not throttled and i'm getting 80 frames per second it doesn't it's full noise it really games well i did not expect um vega graphics in a laptop Holy cow, I always do that. Um, to be this good. I really didn't expect it. You can probably hear the fans there. Can you hear the fans? It's not that loud. Re honestly, I mean, I've got a gaming laptop in the house now. And, you know, compared to a gaming laptop, this is very quiet. And actually, the fans have just started to quiet down. I'm still pulling... 60 frames per second in excess of 60 frames per second the clock speeds are still at that 2.5 gigahertz cpu is 74 degrees we're not getting up to that stupid temperature of around 100 or anything like that very controllable temperatures here oh um and the gpu is not even hot at all really is it uh, so 
very good call in on this. The performance is really good. Still getting over 60 frames per second. Just under. And this is high and very high. If you set this to medium, you'll be plowing 60 frames per second, no problem. So um, most other games I test, I test at medium. So as I said before, it's a 60 frames per second, 1080p medium settings. That's the type of um, system it is. That's its best performing uh, window there. And very happy with the performance. And as you can see, it's very bright now. So um, usually that means in high traffic areas, the frames should start dropping on a really bright day like this. Because, um, you know, bright days, for some reason, require more horsepower or they, they're harder to run for some reason. I don't know why. If anyone can enlighten me, that'll be nice. But still, that constant 60, look at it. Woo! Just dips under 60 every now and then, but still, it's basically a constant 60 frames per second. No heating issues whatsoever. And it's super quiet. I mean, compared to a gaming laptop or even like some other just 15 inch laptops. It's very quiet. It's like it's not even working. Have a listen. The fans don't even seem like they're working that hard. So I love how quiet it is. I mean, it is got some noise there. Don't get me wrong. But when I say it's quiet, I mean, in terms of other laptops, it is a lot quieter. Holy crap. Oh, what happened there? Okay, that's a jump, is it? Oh, we'll, we'll go back and we'll try that. Ooh, jump. Let's go back and try that, eh? And then we'll log off here because it's going to be constant. I've already gamed on it quite a lot. It's not going to start degrading in performance. I mean, it's not even running... It's not even running at um, full speed fans here, so... The fans aren't running at full speed, so boom, look at that. Pretty pathetic jump there. But anyway, as you see, it's quite a gaming beast, actually. I'm very happy with the game performance. And as two-in-ones go, that's amazing. These really thin two-in-ones, wow, amazing. Catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.